We're in panoramic today, and we're looking at housing of the future, housing that is affordable. And Patrick Kennedy, you're talking about three things that cities can do to really help affordability of housing. Why don't you talk about those and we'll have a conversation. Sure. Um, after developing um, high density infill housing for the last 25 years here in Berkeley and San Francisco, I've come to the conclusion that if cities are serious about providing affordable housing, affordable housing has to embody three things. First is the housing has to be car free. Building parking facilities with housing adds an enormous amount of cost, complexity, and in the age of Uber and zip cars, largely unnecessary. So that's item number one. Item number two is the housing has to have in it what I call micro DNA, which is to say fanatical attention to using the space as efficiently as possible. It doesn't necessarily have to be tiny, but it just has to be well designed. And number three is the housing needs to be built modular. Uh, bespoke housing, uh, which is essentially what we've been doing for the last 180 years with balloon frame, stick frame housing, is simply too cumbersome and too expensive to do. And, and housing is something that is one of the few industries that has not been industrialized the way that every other kind of commodity is has in, in the United States. And so uh, I think if we're going to produce meaningful numbers of rental housing, for example, in our cities, there have to, they have to be modular. So those three things, car-free, micro-DNA, and modular. And I want to get back to the modular, but first let's describe where we're at here, this 9,000 square foot lot. And we happen to be in the building called the Panoramic, which is the first high-rise micro-apartment project in the United States, I believe. Certainly the first in San Francisco, too. It's car-free. Uh, the units are micro-designed. It is not modular, but it could be modular with the technology that's available now. And it, this is a technology that we're exploring right now. And in fact, we have a couple projects using this steel modular techniques in, in the pipeline. The units here range from 274 square feet for a studio to 525 square feet for a three bedroom uh, apartment. And we'll look at one of those apartments here. I'll get some B-roll of it, but it is fully self-contained, high quality, well insulated. We're in here with some other folks working away right now, right? Right. Yeah, we believe in doing the basics really well. Soundproofing, ventilation, light, storage, ease of moving around the apartment, uh, and just general livability. And uh, we maintain that our 270 square foot studios are better, more comfortable, more functional than 450 square foot studios built by a, a REIT across the street. One of the things that impressed me was coming in the door and you've got these uh, community spaces. Oh yes, that's one thing. We do have tiny spaces here, but we like to think that we pay a lot of special attention to our public spaces. And in fact, we just had a gentleman here from a firm called Citizen M, which is a, a hipster hotel uh, company based in Amsterdam that thought our lobby felt like a hotel lobby as opposed to an apartment lobby, which I thought was high praise coming from him. Yeah, I thought it was a coffee shop or something, especially with some of the neat amenities like the uh, modes of transportation that are uh, put a display to the screen board and our booths. And yeah, they're designed, our, place, our ground floor places are designed to be as sticky as possible, which is to say to keep people in them. Um, let them meet their neighbors easily, things like that. And it's rented out right now. I mean, it's, is it market rate housing or how's that uh, worked well, out? It, it, this is a market rate housing project, but we signed long-term leases with two schools that use it for their uh, undergraduates, graduates, and faculty. One of the cool things about um, your approach is that you can get relatively high density on a very small piece of land. I mean, what are we talking about as far as? This is a 9,000 square foot parcel, and we have 160 apartments, which comes to a density level of about 800 units an acre. And if we had all micro apartments or all, all studios here, we could get close to 1,000 units an acre. How many feet above the ground is it? This is a 12-story building, 120 feet. Yeah, I noticed there's nine-foot ceilings uh, in the apartments themselves, right? Yes. We're big believers in tall ceilings, big windows, natural ventilation, operable windows, among other things. And within the uh, rooms themselves, the doors open up and it gives you more feeling of space, it seems. Yes, right over here to the left actually is a fully functioning 450-square-foot uh, two-bedroom apartment. 
and the spaces are designed to be opened up so that you don't feel claustrophobic and to allow multiple uses during the course of the day. So it's, it's always struck me as kind of a waste to have a bedroom that you use only eight or nine hours a day uh, and on top of that you're asleep and yet the rest of the time it's, it's idle. So we try to um, make it easy to use that space and easy to convert it to, its, to a different use. Well, in your webinar recently, you talked about the uh, changing generations, the fact that we don't have CDs, we don't have things like that anymore. Right. People are, don't need to store as much. Yeah, well, that's exactly true. I mean, you have, you have all the entertainment in the world uh, that you could want right there on your iPhone. You can even watch Netflix and uh, movies, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that a lot of people are eager to spend their money on experiences as opposed to stuff. I believe that this generation of millennials is not as attached to stuff. Maybe they spend all their time and money on Facebook, I'm not sure, but... Or Pokemon Go. Or Pokemon <laughs> Go, exactly. 